it's time to become the king of the pirates, Demon Lord Hashiro. In today's video, I combined One Piece, Demon Slayer, and the Tensura Minecraft mods and put it onto a public server. I also added a few more secret mods that you'll see throughout the video. So let's check out the insane powers, abilities, and bosses to fight in these three mods. Let's do this. As soon as I spawned in, I used the Tensura booklet you spawn in with to reincarnate myself. This gave me the unique skill, Shadow Striker, and I chose to be a goblin because it has a bunch of evolutions and my goal is to become a divine Oni by becoming a demon lord. But we're just getting started. I'm also a fish man due to the prime piece mod, which will give me a ton of advantages in the water. I hunted down a panda man armor trader first, and luckily for me, I was born a Don Quixote, which gives me 100,000 berries to start out. It's pretty cool having rich parents. I bought powerful boots, buggy's coat, swordsman pants, and Sabo's hat, which gave me a massive boost to my armor. I killed some nearby animals for food and stormed a marine base. Some marines were easy, but I knew I would get killed if I tried to take on an otherworlder, so I took on an otherworlder. Although in my defense, I tried to cheese them first, but it didn't go too well. And even though it didn't go the way I had hoped, I'm alive, so I can't complain. So I used what little experience I've earned so far and upgraded my health and sword abilities. I tried to take on one of Big Mom's tart ships in hopes of getting some sweets, but it didn't go so well either, and I had to flee. Luckily, I swim extremely fast because I'm a fishman. Nighttime came and I was still struggling for food, and I was jumped by some pirates and their captain- Wait, is that Pyramid Head? They followed me out to the water where I'm strongest, so I guess I'm the captain now? Unfortunately, the night wasn't over. Pirates were shooting at me, Jason Voorhees tried to kill me, and since it was the night, the demons started attacking too. But that wasn't the terrifying part. An orc disaster and his army were in the desert right near the spawn, so I warned the others. However, not all of them heeded my warning, and Agent Gunny started taking on the army. In the process, I was hit by a lava blast and almost burnt to death right then and there but I landed in a nearby river with two HP to spare and then was shot in the back, bringing me down to one HP, so I booked it out of there. I healed up and eventually came across a Demon Slayer graveyard with plenty of boot offerings. There were even plates of waffles and tea, so I robbed the dead and feasted like a king that day. I found a small house nearby, but the sheets were kind of plain, so I turned on the waifu bed's texture pack and well, I, I wouldn't really call Law a waifu, but I'm sure someone will enjoy this bed. I need to hunt down a different one though. On my journey to find a better house with a better bed, I found and killed a temple demon and realized that I wasn't getting my Nitrin sword or demon slayer armor for some reason. The advancement was bugged, but my amazing mod team quickly got that fixed. But while I waited for the fix, I was jumped by beast pirates and their new leader, Suzumaru. I took the beast pirates down, but fled to upgrade my stats some more so I wouldn't be killed by their demon leader. I focused on getting more experience so I could level up some more, and I even killed Pennywise. Not long after the fix was in, I killed another demon, which finally gave me my Nitrin sword and my demon slayer armor. Now if I can just hunt down a good devil fruit, I'm gonna be kicking ass and taking names. Oh look, I found a better bed. Damn! Yo, wait a minute! We got options, just like today's sponsor, Opera GX. Opera GX is my favorite web browser, which offers a ton of customization. And with GX mods, you can change pretty much anything you want. They have an anime mod on the store, which gives you access to all these incredible functionalities. You get incredible background music like what's playing right now, keyboard sounds for when you're typing, opening, and closing tab sounds. <laughs> yeah, boy. And each mod has incredible themes and colors which match the mod perfectly. And with an easy to use mod menu, it's a no brainer. And there's a ton more mods, including a Minecraft theme mod, if that's more your cup of tea. They also have these incredible animated wallpapers featuring some of your favorite anime. 
some of which we're showing in this video. Opera also allows you to pop out any video, so watching never stops. Whether you're catching up on your favorite anime, studying, or watching one of my videos here on YouTube, so that way you never have to stop watching your favorite stuff. They also have integrated apps right on the sidebar, which will allow you to chat and browse the web at the same time with Facebook Messenger, Telegram, and WhatsApp. You can even watch TikTok through the sidebar too. So if all that sounds good to you and you want to download Opera GX, you can do so by using my link in the description box below. They make importing everything you need from your previous browser all in just a few clicks. Your browsing history, bookmarks, cookies, and more. It's even compatible with every Google Chrome extension. So thanks to Opera GX for sponsoring today's video, and remember to use my link below to download Opera GX today. I said hello to Nezuko and looted the chests inside for a bunch of iron and gold. With my new flame-breathing sword, I was taking down everybody that came in my way. But this is when I noticed an issue. I couldn't equip diamond armor. I couldn't even equip iron armor either. This was a drawback to choosing to be a goblin. I was going to need subordinates if I wanted to level up and be able to not only increase my strength to utilize iron, diamond, and netherite armor. And with effects like Mending and Protection 6, I needed to evolve. I was still struggling to find food, but I managed to find a Demon Slayer house that had a ton of meat inside. But there was no stove. I also found a goblin town nearby and named my first Billy. He unfortunately was slaughtered by a demon slayer, but I wasn't strong enough to avenge him yet. I will get you for this, Tapioca! I named a few more billies who were promptly slaughtered by Das Bones, so I did what any grieving father would do, and I slaughtered him. Wapple even stopped by during my grieving period, so I murdered him too, just to get his coat. It was worth it. I decided to stay the night in the goblin village and open a bunch of treasure chests that I found so far. So I crafted some iron keys and ended up getting a ton of devil fruits. Not too many good ones, but enough to get started. I ate the Shiko Shiko no Mi, Doc Q's devil fruit, which allows me to poison people. It's an alright devil fruit, but definitely not what I'm looking for for endgame content. I continued searching and looting the map before finding Big Mom's wedding cake, which had a bunch of chests, iron, gold, and diamond blocks, which would definitely help to survive this world. I also found a thousand sunny nearby and- Wait, did I just get assaulted? Anyways, I looted the ship and headed out to look some more. I opened up more treasure chests and switched out my devil fruits and the Moku Moku no Mi, Smoker's Devil Fruit, which would allow me to fly and was considerably stronger than the Shiku Shiku. It's still not the fruit I want, but this is a massive step up. I ran around the world slaying as many demons as I could find, plundering the Baratie and Shanks' ship too, before finally finding Mount Sagiri. But alas, I couldn't find Sabito this time, which seems to be a trend anytime I play the Demon Slayer mod. I killed some nearby goldfish demons and took on wave after wave of pirates and low-level demons before leveling up my Demon Slayer rank to Tushino. I found the house that has two Demon Slayer masks and a water Nichiren sword since my flame one was getting extremely low, and I took on the demon Rokuro and became a Hinoto rank Demon Slayer. I trained some more on Mount Sagiri before heading out and finding Kid Ship Victoria Punk which had an insane amount of loot. For some reason, Kid and Killer weren't there though, which I guess worked out for me in the end. I looted the ship dry and even bumped into Manaquaza, who was at the bottom of the ship looting. We said our goodbyes, and then I killed a giant mushroom monster before leaving. I found a Demon Slayer town not too long after and looted it for Scarlet Ore, Netherite, Gold, and Iron. After looting the place dry, I hunted down Mount Yoko and got even more Scarlet Ore as my crewmate Stupid Fox finally logged onto the server. Since Agent Gunny and Manaquaza had already claimed a chunk of Mount Yoko, I helped them find the Scarlet Ore within their claim as a sign of good faith. I met up with Stupid Fox and shared some of my loot to help him get started, and we hunted down a base. Oh look, it's Yamato. Now it's a dead Yamato, which means I have the glorious Yamato Denden Mushi to display on my mantle to show I murdered him. 
totally not weird at all. Not long after, I found the demon Kaigaku and killed it to see if, like the last time I played this mod, that his Nichiren sword was indestructible. I killed him, leveled up to Kinoto and Kinoe at the same time somehow, and I did receive his sword. And yes, it is indestructible. So I don't know if this is a glitch with the mod or what, but hey, I'm not complaining. I looted the bones and skull of a large dead dragon before the night was over and finally found a good place to call home next to the portal to hell from the Tensura mod. We even decorated it with the skull of the dragon I found. I killed Mihawk who was harassing me near our base and then started to build a wall to keep out the mobs. It's gonna be the biggest wall you've ever seen. You will see, folks. Oh, and spoiler alert, the wall didn't do anything. And of course, while constructing my wall, I decided to switch devil fruits and eat the Gomu Gomu no Mi, Luffy's devil fruit, which as I'm sure you know, means I can't fly. Then of course, to make matters worse, the demon Koko Shibo decided to show up and harass me, but I'm definitely not strong enough to take him on yet, so I hid on top of my wall until morning. Now, after cowering in fear all night long, I decided to go harass some low-level fishmen at Arlong Park. Let's just say, they're not too fond of electricity. The hand demon and Kyogi, or Kyogi, I don't know how his name is pronounced, were also nearby, so I knocked the hand demon into the water and took down Kyogre, which was the last demon I needed to become a Hashira. And after finishing off the hand demon, I have successfully killed 30 demons. I even decided to fight a fire dragon, who ironically was in the snowy mountains. From here, I just started finding dragon after dragon. Yeah. I found six dragons in like one to two Minecraft days. It was insane. I also looted Tanjiro's house since there's always a shulker box, iron blocks, and charcoal inside. There's also some rabbit meat too if you're struggling to find food. Oh look, another dragon. But of course, as we know from Punk Hazard, a dragon ain't shit to Luffy. And one more thing before the day is over, the Billy Army begins again. Now at this point, I finally found out how to drain my magicules so I could get more and found out how to evolve from a goblin to a hobgoblin. Now the goblin race in the Tensura mod has four evolutions total, evolving from a goblin to a hobgoblin, which requires one or more named subordinates, 40 experience levels, and an entire set of iron tools and armor. This will make me stronger and finally allow me to use iron armor. You can also level up from a hobgoblin to an ogre, an ogre to a kajin, a kajin to an oni, and an oni to a divine oni, which is my goal. I'll need to eventually name over 20 different subordinates, get 70 experience levels, and an entire set of magic steel and demon steel tools. I'll also need full netherite armor, a demon seed, and 10,000 souls by killing 10,000 vanilla Minecraft mobs or other worlders from the Tensura mod. I spent the next chunk of time just running around and killing various mobs named Billy Dog and killed my 40th demon. I also found out that when I evolve using the Tensura mod, it resets your prime piece stats. So I had to use the orb item using the creative menu to reset my stat points, which is why you'll see my health plummet below 100 and then shoot back up again throughout the video. So keep this in mind if you decide to play this chaos mod pack. While hunting down more demons and looking for some of the higher ranked mobs of all three mod packs, I found Hagen Aduka, and he gave me Tokito's Misbreathing Nichiren Sword. I used a waystone to head back to base to grab the rest of our rare Scarlet Ore and got five more Nichiren Swords from our boy. I got Uzui's Sound Breathing Sword, Zenitsu's Thunder Breathing Sword, Ooh, another sir. Tokito Sword, Rengoku's flame breathing sword before being assaulted by an evil centipede and finally oh come on my rage of getting three of the same Nichiren swords was boiling over so I decided to fight Kunroji who dealt 320 damage to me and gave me the demon slayer mark and I took her and her love breathing down also I know this is minecraft but damn y'all are slacking on the titties not long after, I killed a temple demon as my 50th demon kill and unlocked the crimson red Nichiren blade and upgraded my breathing. Oh, I also killed Rengoku, 
So obviously, I've been gaining loot from the Prime Piece mod, using Devil Fruits, and slaying demons left and right. But I've barely scratched the surface of the slime mod outside of leveling up once and naming a few subordinates. This is because you need the Predator skill to really start getting other abilities. And unfortunately, if you're not a slime who has Predator, you need to kill intelligent slimes to unlock that ability. Unfortunately, intelligent slimes are not only extremely rare to find, but the chance of getting the skill is also extremely rare. And to be honest, I didn't want to run around hunting slimes for the next 40 hours of gameplay. So I had our mod team spawn in over 100 slimes inside this house. I let them out and the chaos ensued. We ended up doing the math and I killed about 117 slimes before finally receiving Predator, which seems like a lot, right? At this point, I'm quite a few hours of playtime in and I've seen like maybe one slime naturally spawn in the world. But 117 slimes is nothing. We threw 100 slimes at Stupid Fox. Nothing. No Predator skill. Then another 100. Then more. He had killed almost 1,000 slimes with no Predator skill in sight. And then I killed some leftover stragglers and I unlocked Self-Regeneration, Absorb, and Dissolve. Self-Regeneration does exactly what it says and Absorb and Dissolve allows me to not have to worry about eating. It also prevents you from drowning, and now I'm already a fish man, so this doesn't really matter, but in case you were curious, I felt I would tell you what it does. Now, Stupid Fox still had not received the Predator skill. After over a thousand slimes, we kept throwing more at him. A thousand slimes at once. Nothing. We had him kill over 5,000 different slimes before finally giving up. We did eventually find out, though, that the issue was the Demon Slayer Sword. Apparently, the slime mod cannot tell when you use a Nitrin Sword ability. So if you're trying to get abilities in this mod pack, make sure to not use the Demon Slayer Sword when you're killing these things. I logged off for the night, but when I returned, our base was flooded with goblins. And I still, to this day, have zero idea where they came from. None of the mods spawned them in. No one I know of brought them here, but there was more than I could count. So I just started the Billy Army. Also, to be clear, I actually don't think this is one of the mods helping me out for my video. I honestly think this is part of the mod. I don't know if the goblins breed after a while or something, but we actually found another flood of goblins later during my playthrough randomly out in the world. So yeah, I have no idea. Let me know in the comments if you know what caused this. So after growing the Billy army to over 17 Billy strong, I evolved yet again. Now that the Billy army had begun, I went into the portal to hell and mined as much polished blackstone as I could find. And I also grabbed a ton of warp stems too, so I could really start making our town, the tip, a reality. Once I returned from hell, I headed to spawn to hang out with some other players, and we transformed into various mobs we defeated by using the morph mod. I then went hunting once again to try and get as many Den Den Mushis as I could find. So I took on a Kainu, and with all the powers, skills, and abilities I've received since starting this playthrough, I killed him with ease. I also looted a tart ship and decided to eat the Gura Gura no Mi, Whitebeard's Devil Fruit which was the perfect fruit to cause some chaos. And then I finally got to work on making the tip sexy. After a little bit of construction, Stupid Fox gave me some magic steel, so I decided to finally start making the magic steel tools I would need to evolve. I made the magic steel sword, and if you look closely here, we can see that while I was trying to make the rest of the magic steel tools, I evolved. I still have no idea how this happened, and in fact, I spent hours trying to figure out why I couldn't evolve, not knowing that I had already evolved at this moment. I don't know if it was because the guy next to me named me when I wasn't paying attention and that causes you to level up, or if it was a glitch or, or something else, but from this point forward, I'm a Kajin, and in order to become an Oni, I needed demon steel tools and a full set of netherite armor. 
and that's why the evolution kept failing for me, since I thought that there were more magic steel tools that I needed to get. So if you're watching this, Nicola Osh 12, let us know in the comments below if you named me or if this is just some kind of freak coincidence or glitch. I bought Kizaru to get his Den Den Mushi for my collection. Oh, and I also drowned Kaido and bonked him on the head until he died. From here, I farmed other worlders to get as many skills as I could since you need an analyst-like skill such as Sage, Great Sage, or Investigator to evolve into a Kajin, or at least that's what I thought. I gained Berserker, Black Lightning, Magic Jamming, Shadow Step, Investigator, and finally Sage. I then spent the next few hours absolutely losing my mind trying to figure out why the evolution wasn't working before I finally moved on to temporarily go fight Uzui. Now Koko Shibo also decided to show up and I managed to take them both down. Now for some weird reason, Koko Shibo even turned invisible toward the end of his life. Not really sure what happened there either. When you combine a lot of mods, things get a little weird. I made my way to meet Stupid Fox at the Labyrinth Tree so I could finally start taking down the rest of the stronger bosses in the mod. The Spirit Protector Colossus didn't do a great job at protecting because I absolutely destroyed him in just a couple hits. It wasn't even close. And I ended up being chosen by the Great Spirit of Earth and unlocked Earth Manipulation. After defeating Kokushibo and the Spirit Protector Colossus, I was feeling pretty confident since it seemed I had truly become super overpowered at this point. But there's still a few things I needed to do before I'd be satisfied with this playthrough. I took down Captain Kid and Garp, which really fleshed out my collection of Denden Den Mushis, and I called it a night. The next day when I logged on, my beautiful town I had spent countless hours working on was being absolutely ransacked by Spirit Protector Colossus. And yes, it did cause some chaos, but they also murdered multiple innocent Billies and destroyed my walls in the process, which I had to spend multiple more hours repairing. The Spirit Protector Colossus scattered once they took down my walls, like the first episode of Attack on Titan. But after taking them all down, I had more than enough magic steel to make the demon steel tools I would need to become an Oni. So I had more than enough magic steel to make the demon steel tools, but I would need enough crying obsidian. So I started searching the map for destroyed portals. I also made a pit stop at Mount Natagumo to clap Rui's cheeks. And I even tried to take down Doma, but they died to the sun before I had a chance to finish them off. I continued my search for Crying Obsidian, and once I had enough, I headed back to the tip to make my Demon Steel tools. And luckily, between mine and Stupid Fox's loot, I had the Netherite armor and the Netherite necessary to make the full set of armor needed for the Evolution 2. I was finally a Shadow Lord Oni, which meant I just needed to become a Demon Lord. I hunted down an Orc Lord and its army and took them all down easily before the Orc Lord evolved into an Orc Disaster, which is exactly what I'd need. I started whooping the Orc Disaster up and down the desert. It even started to run away from me, but it wasn't enough, and I took it down and unlocked the Gluttony and Starved skill alongside the Demon Lord Seed, which would make becoming a Demon Lord way easier by reducing the souls needed from 100,000 souls to 10,000 souls. But before I started my onslaught of humans to become a divine Oni, I went back to Mount Natagumo to hunt down some more demons and took down upper rank four, Zoka, Zoka, Zoka. This is the dude who splits, he's, he's, he splits into multiple demons. You kill them all, that's, you get it. Now I've shown how to make a mob farm to get 10,000 souls in my original Minecraft slime mod video I did here on the channel. But this time I did things another way. And it totally didn't have to do with spawning in hundreds of humans at a time. I would never do that. I got to 9,999 souls and started hunting endlessly for Shizue to be my 10,000th soul kill. I finally found her and took her down so quick I honestly caught me off guard. I earned the fire manipulation skill and then I had to take down Ifrit, who was a little harder to be honest. 
especially since my character was being consumed by demon power for finally killing 10,000 human souls. But I managed to take it for down and got a flood of skills. One of which almost burned my house down because it made fire spawn as I sprinted. Finally, I evolved and became a demon lord. My power grew exponentially and I even acquired ultra speed regeneration, which would borderline make me invincible. Or so I thought. I spent the next few days building our town and even invited Nicola Osh 12 to take over one of the four towns inside the tip, and in return, he gave me two Charybdis cores. Then, Stupid Fox found an army of potential billies, so I met him in the desert near spawn to start the army again, since I think all my other billies were killed during the Spirit Protector onslaught from earlier. Let's just say the billy army is strong. 69 subordinate strong to be clear seemed like the right number so i brought them all back to the tip and placed them in their corresponding towns so i created an army of 69 billies built a massive town called the tip became a hashira defeated one piece admirals and yonkos and became a demon lord so i finally took my charybdis core to the closest village i could find transformed a villager and took on charybdis and to be honest, the fight was quite a bit easier than I expected. Charybdis was an extremely difficult fight when I first played the slime mod, but I guess the combination of all three anime mods in one just made me beyond OP. I fused with the now active Charybdis core after taking him down, becoming even stronger in the process, and took down Himijima for good measure since I hadn't fought him yet. Me and Stupid Fox even used creative mode to get an egg of each of the strongest mobs in all three mods to try and fight them all at once. Between the two of us and them fighting each other, it was a pretty easy fight all things considered, although a bit chaotic. But we managed to take them down after just a few minutes. So we needed to break out the two trump cards that might finally give us a challenge. Hinata from the slime mod who will kill you in a guaranteed seven hits and the secret demon slayer boss that you can only spawn in using an egg. We started with Hinata and it was scary because I got hit like three or four times, but we absolutely obliterated her in just a few seconds. We even attempted to fight her on our own to see if that was more of a challenge, but that was super easy as well. Finally, we spawned in the secret demon slayer boss, Yorichi, and he actually gave us both a pretty massive beating. He didn't have a lot of health, but his defense was through the roof and he hit like a freaking truck. If we weren't fighting together and also didn't have ultra regeneration speed from the slime mod, I honestly don't think we would have even had a chance to take him down. But we did it by working together and using the typical anime trope, the power of friendship. Did it, we conquered all three mods. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. This was not only an extremely fun mod to set up and play, but a super fun video to make as well. And if you want the mod pack, there's a link in the description box below to download it. And if you're fast enough, you can even come join the server and play before we shut it down. Subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you next time. Later.